It just hugs the road. What's going on guys? Car Review Guys here. My name is AJ and we are back this week with the 2023 Honda Civic Type R 6-speed manual. Of course, as that's all you can get this vehicle in. Uh, without further ado, this is the full review. So we're going to start with the exterior, work our way to the interior, and then we are going to take it on a drive. But of course, you guys know the rule. We got to throw the cinematic in there before we get into all of that. So let's roll. guys enjoyed that cinematic alrighty let's go over some of the stats and figures here so underneath the hood is a two liter turbo four-cylinder producing 315 horsepower and of course it's paired to a six-speed manual transmission and the drivetrain is only available in front wheel drive the curb weight is coming in at just under 3,200 pounds, which is gonna push this Type R from zero to 60 in about 5.1 seconds, not too shabby. Of course, the zero to 60 is not what this car is all about, and we will get into that further. Pricing starts around $43,000, and the tester today is $45,345, and that is including the destination charge. Now, Coming to the side, the overall length is around 15 feet, which is around six to eight inches longer than some of its competitors, uh, like, for example, the Golf R. Looking straight on to touch on the width, it is six feet one inches. The fuel door is located over here on the driver's side. It's a 12.4 gallon fuel tank. The economy's 22 city, 28 highway, in a combined average of 24. So if you have a full tank, considering you are on the highway only, your max range is gonna be around 347 miles. Alrighty, let's do a quick walk around here. So you have a functional vent right here. It's going to be coming through and up, and that is your heat extractor. That is functional. So love to see functionality being done. Of course, you have the signature red on the Honda and the R for the Type R. LED headlamps, which look really good. These wheels, I really like them. Being the, like it's like a matte satin black, uh, really. And they are 265s all the way around. And you have a 13.8 inch rotor with a four piston caliper which is certainly good enough for this vehicle. Uh, again, we'll get into it in the driving segment, but this thing can handle really well and the brakes are superb for what this vehicle is meant to be. Continuing on around, of course you have gloss black for the mirrors and then all of the trim around is also gloss black, which is a nice touch. It's nice to see, again, functional vents. You can see uh, straight through them. I don't even know if I can get the camera close enough for you to actually see it but nonetheless and then just look at the overall curvature the way that it just comes out to fill these uh thicker tires i do believe i could be wrong on this but i believe the previous generation was like 245s these are 265s so they are a good bit wider and it they made it match obviously the fenders to the wheels and it looks really good 
Down below you have a little side skirt, which is gloss black, and it looks pretty good if you ask me. You have keyless entry, of course. On the mirror, you have blind spot monitoring. Continuing on around, again, already stated, driver's side fuel door, and also on the wheels, they are 19 inches now. I also believe that the previous generation were 20 inches, so they went with a little bit smaller tire for better performance. And I can certainly see that, because again, this thing is quite impressive on the road. Now, you have a nice big wing back here that is functional, uh, so it's not just something that, uh, you know, you just slap on there for, for looks. It actually is doing something, which is nice. The other thing back here that I really like, of course, is the signature tri exhaust. I think that looks really good, and the diffuser that it has down there, I love the look of that. I think that looks super aggressive, looks nice. Now to get into the rear underneath the Honda emblem there, you just simply press a little pad and up it goes. It doesn't say it on this speaker in the rear, however, there is now premium uh, speakers offered, which is a Bose sound system, and it does sound pretty good. Good bit of space back here, and of course you can pull this over and it'll literally sit right there and that's a pretty unique design that's the first i've seen i haven't seen any vehicle do that i've obviously seen covers that usually go front to back um, but it's nice that it's just retractable it's out of the way and very quick and easy to use which is great and for those of you that are wondering yes without folding the seats down you can fit a golf bag the back has to go right there and it'll come right up in this little cubby hole so for any of you golfers out there i checked that uh, today or actually yesterday sorry uh, to make sure that does fit so you're covered if you're new to my channel I check every single vehicle whether it's easy to get in or not we are going to check the rear seat I am five foot nine so here we go oh that was actually a lot easier than I expected the roof line I thought was gonna be like wow that's actually not bad that really is not bad I mean if you're taller than me you're gonna have to duck obviously more but that wasn't bad i expected it to to be a little bit worse so now that we're in the back seat so the back seat doesn't feel as special as the front seat just being honest there is just black cloth um up front you have the alcantara and the red which we'll get to uh, also on the door uh plastics here hard plastic here and then you have a little bit of alcantara here which is pretty nice on the armrest so that's good the window switch still looks pretty premium has little uh, bezels and stuff which is great as well and then out in front of us what does feel special are these seats type r with some texture to them it looks really good there is no vents back here for the ac and it is not a five seater technically because your uh, cup holders are sitting here they did not come down there's no armrest or anything like that so that's kind of unique as well and of course you can see this bright red carpet which pretty neat testing the front seat here fairly easy to get in other than the bolsters on the seat i mean they are not small bolsters like to give you an idea i don't know if you can see that that's straight up basically so your leg basically will fall into that crack um and then you kind of just fall in after that now once you're in the seats are great like for the track machine and how good this thing handles you want the bolsters i can assure you so honda did a really good job it's just when you're first getting in it it's not the easiest i mean it's not terrible but especially if you're older it's not going to be the easiest but i don't think that's the target market anyway in my humble opinion um so now checking out the front as i stated bose speakers which says it there and checking out the door here this is actually an led light and it is red at night which is a really nice touch i love to see that from honda i wish they did it actually in more vehicles um nice alcantara on the armrest here with contrast stitching good premium window switches as you can see autos for the fronts and then you do have power mirrors they're just not power folding 
And then this is all plasticky down here. And then this is nice and soft Alcantara as well, which again feels more premium. And then this up here is also not hard plastic. It is like a uh, molded type stuff. So it's just got a little bit of give to it. There is no heads up display option out in front of us, but down below, check out this digital screen. I have it in the plus R mode right now. And it looks like a track cluster for me it personally reminds me of a mclaren 720s because they're kind of the ones that i don't want to say started that because they didn't start it obviously race cars technically started it but from a manufacturer standpoint so I, anyway i love the look of that it looks really good it's clean um yeah great great screen checking out the steering wheel all of your media options over on the left and over on the right are all of your cruise control adaptive cruise control lane centering all of that stuff and having those features on a vehicle that is this capable on a track so you could take it to the track and then also just drive it home in comfort pretty nice to have that you have a nine inch screen up here uh works good no issues it's uh responsive i can click it and it goes to whatever i want it to you do have a pretty unique feature here. It's called the Log R, and it gives you every piece of information for performance, in my opinion, that you would ever want. You can data log, um, date, time, anything you want to do. So pretty neat to have all that information, and Honda's really, they, they make this car feel special um, for what it is. And the other reason is, is because it's labeled. You can see there, this is R-00275. So as funny as it sounds is to have a vehicle labeled and numbered, it just feels that much more special. And having that badge, very cheap on their part, obviously like in the sense of cost to do it, but it makes it feel so much more special. It really does over most vehicles that feels so much better. Now here you do have dual zone climate, which is good, which we need to calm that down so it's not blowing like crazy. You have a wireless phone charger down here, and of course the manual transmission. There are no heated or cooled seats on this vehicle, so if you're wanting that, I do apologize, you can't get that. Now, look at these seats though. Got the Type R on there, again, all Alcantara, the bright red, you have the floor mats that say Type R, like, wow. Seat belts that are red, it looks good. The only thing is, keep in mind, you better like the red too because that is the only option on the type r you have two cup holders here and of course a little center console nothing too big going to be fitting in there but nonetheless it is there and is alcantara and it is soft which is great i think that about covers the interior i think it's time we take this thing on the road which again that's where it shines and we'll get into that specifically let's roll so as we get started here, the one thing that I will say for me in this vehicle as a performance track oriented, now it's not really made for a drifting track per se, but someone could try to slide this car even though it's front wheel drive. Um, it's an electronic parking brake, which is to me just a little bit odd. It's not a big deal, but just pointing that out to make sure I did touch on that. It is an electronic parking brake. Now, we are starting out in plus R mode just because we always try to do a quick performance run here, the best we can. So I'm not the, this is not scientific. This is an everyday like average driver. Obviously I've been driving stick for many a year. So let's try to see what we can get for zero to 60 in plus R mode in three, two, one, go. A lot of wheel spin. 60. Ooh, this thing eats. Now it is, it's 75 degrees right now in the morning. Pretty cool. Tires are cold. So I just got wheel spin for days right there. Again, this vehicle is not made for zero to 60. This is made to go around a track and it has plenty of power to be going around a track. Let me tell you, I mean, this thing, especially a rolling start like that man this thing is fun now where it shines is doing some banks so right left right left like it just hugs the road absolutely hugs the road like so I've, I've driven this car a little bit now maybe like 60 miles no it's no more than that i've driven it like 100 miles 
So dr driving at like 100 miles already so far, hands down, bar none, best handling front wheel drive vehicle I've ever driven. Ever, period. Best handling, no question. <laughs> It is really that good. Like I am so impressed with how good it is. The clutch feel, people do ask that and I do miss on that, I apologize. The clutch feels very light, it's very soft and I am being blinded. Uh, nonetheless, very soft, easy clutch feel in this. Like it, it takes, you know, even my little chicken legs have no problem with the clutch on this vehicle. And the reason I point on that too is like if you're driving in the city a lot, it may be annoying you know, all the time having to do it, but it's not like an old like C6 Corvette where it's a heavy clutch pedal and your leg is just gonna get smoked over time. This is not like that, it's, it's very light. Now, what is not light is the steering feel. The steering feel on this thing is quite heavy and like at first you're kind of like, eh, but man is it good. Man, is it good. I love the heavy feel and the steering, and it helps because I, I've pushed it on some back roads and some twisties, and it really just, oh, it hugs them so well. You feel so in control, which is great. We just dropped it down into comfort mode here, and in comfort, it does soften things up a bit. Um, I'm not gonna say that it makes it crazy comfortable, obviously. To me, it's still a very track-oriented vehicle, and that's what I would expect and want in this vehicle. If it really felt that comfortable to me, they would be missing the mark. That's my opinion. That's not why you buy this vehicle. This is a track it, and potentially daily drive it and you can live with it while you're probably younger. The older you get, the just more luxurious things you want, right? Or it's an extra car for you and again, it's a fun weekend or track car and you have another vehicle. So let's not get uh, unaligned on the expectations and what this vehicle is. Now, as far as road noise goes, the tires are a bit loud. You can definitely uh, hear them. It's not like it's, uh, you know, causing you to scream or talk, you know, or anything louder than normal, but you can certainly hear it. It is very present in the cab of the vehicle. Everything else, as far as wind noise goes, pretty good, pretty quiet. Like, that was a big motorhome that went by, you probably couldn't even hear it. So even passing people at 50 miles an hour, you can't hear it. So. That's good, I mean, it's, it's good wind control noise. As far as blind spots go, checking over to our left, the pillar is a little bit wider than I would say uh, normal. Not really an issue, but it is there. And then over to our right, not much of a blind spot at all other than the very back section of a pillar, but not bad, doesn't bother me in the slightest. And of course, as already stated, there is blind spot monitoring if you have any issues with that. Now, as far as modes go, you have comfort, sport, and individual. Now, throttle response has definitely changed between, uh, oh, and plus R, obviously, but we were already in that. Sorry, I was covering new modes. <laughs> so, anyway, if you are, even if you switch from comfort to sport, if you have your foot pedal in the exact same spot, it will literally start to accelerate going from comfort to sport. Um, that's the difference you can feel, which is nice. It's nice to have a difference, right? It's the reason you have modes. They've done a really good job at programming the modes. Suspension, you can feel it as well. Um, softens it up just a little bit, which is nice. And the steering. The steering is just slightly different. It's not a lot. It's not huge, but there is just a little difference. I can feel it. We're going up here very quickly to a little S turn that we have here locally. So I can try my best to portray to you how good this vehicle is. So pretty much on track, you're gonna stay in third gear and the braking is just incredible. I'm coming into the turn quite fast on the brakes, on the brakes. You can feel the back end just a little bit, try to do something, but it is really good. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Oh, it's good, I'm telling you. Oh, if I ever had the chance to take this thing on the track, oh, it would be so fun. All right, hold on. We gotta do a take two real quick, because I'm telling you, 
if you guys are considering a track vehicle but still have some good gas mileage like just a well-rounded vehicle to have some fun with like this is probably the vehicle for you honestly flip the camera around for you guys so you can see this s turn as we go into it here we'll do it again we're gonna do it in third gear because that's pretty much where you're gonna live on track for the most part third gear Gonna be really hard to portray that i understand that you gotta trust me it is so good it is the handling on this thing is amazing so to wrap this up if you're looking for a track vehicle good gas mileage for a track vehicle <laughs> cannot state this enough a reliable vehicle which is what honda is right like they are just known for reliability so a vehicle that you're not going to have issues with where you can just track it all the time and you're not always fixing it this is a great vehicle for you i'm telling you like i i didn't know that it was possible to have a vehicle that could just drive this good and having that active exhaust you can hear it it's piped into the cab too but i just didn't know it was possible to have a front wheel drive vehicle that is this good like i don't understand oh my goodness like on a track the only thing i will recommend is you are going to need a five-point harness you're going to need to use these seats with five-point harness 100 i have enough track time and i don't have anywhere near amount that some people have but i do have more than others as well you're going to want a five-point harness i can assure you this car is that quick it is quick enough that you will want that without question so keep that in mind hope you guys enjoyed today's video i know i've thoroughly enjoyed my time with this the next video is going to be five things to love five things to improve and uh we're on our way to 20,000 subscribers we are over 18,000 now thank each and every one of you and if you liked it be sure to give this a big like as always i'll catch you guys on the next one peace